So good evening, everybody. My name is Dean Robbins. I'm the president of the American Solidarity Party Club. Um, we are a group dedicated to uh, exploring Catholic social teaching and politics um, and furthering the principles of common ground through common sense. Common sense is common ground. Uh, so we have with us two incredible speakers from the uh, Center for the Program of Human Rights uh, at the Institute of Science. Chen Wan Chen is a uh, Distinguished fellow of the Catholic University of America, and he regularly writes pieces that appear in major publications like the Washington Post and Newsweek about China. He published a book in 2016 with the board by the Dalai Lama um, called The Barefoot Lawyer, which is his nickname. Well, probably explain that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. We have a, here with him is uh, Dr. William Saunders, who's the co director of the Center for Religious Liberty at CUA and the director of the Institute for Human Ecology's Program in Human Rights. And he also serves leadership roles in many other organizations, including the Federal Society, where he is the chair of the Religious Liberties Group. So without further ado, please welcome Chen Guan Chen and Dr. William Saunders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Yet if you can't hear us, you just wave your hand. We'll speak up. Uh, so this is the book. It's called The Barefoot Lawyer, and um, you can get it uh, on Amazon still um, um, and subtitled A Blind Man's Fight for Justice and Freedom in, in China. Um, so I'm going to say a few things about him. Um, I think Will has given you uh, handouts about our program in human rights and our Center for Human Rights. Um, I have a Master of Arts in Human Rights, so if any of you are undergrads and you are interested in studying human rights, uh, you can apply to my program. But at the, our Center for Human Rights, we do several different things. You can look it up on the webpage at catholic.edu slash chr for Center for Human Rights. And it, uh, I'm sure the web addresses in the materials he gave you, but it, it tells you the other things we do. The thing we're going to talk about tonight is what we do with Guang Chen. So Guang Chen is a is a distinguished fellow at here at Catholic University, and there's not very many of them, so he's very distinguished. Um, do you guys know who Christian Bale is? He's an actor. He played Batman in one of the movies. Well, Christian Bale is one of the people who wrote an endorsement for this book on the back, because when Guang Chen was under house arrest in China, Christian Bale was making a movie in China, and he tried to come see Guang Chen, and uh, the thugs that the Communist Party had around Guang Chen's house beat him up and pushed him around, and he keeps trying to make a movie about Guang Chen's life. And I'm going to tell you a couple of things about Guang Chen's life. I can't think of anything that would be a more kind of incredible movie. So the question you should have in your mind is why Guang Chen left left China in 2012. Um, you know, it's now 2023. Why hasn't a movie been made? about what I'm going to tell you. I mean, Christian Bale is a famous Hollywood actor. He wants to make a movie about Guang Chen's life. Yet, 12 years later, no movie. There's a lot of lessons there we'll tell you. But So let me tell you his background. So he stood up in China for... So he's called a barefoot lawyer. Why is he called a barefoot lawyer? Because it's a reference to people who... who um, work for the downtrodden, like the rural poor, the farmers, uh, or the handicapped, and it refers to a time in China when they had what were called barefoot doctors. So he was a barefoot lawyer because he helped the downtrodden people, and he really got in trouble with the Communist Party when he issued a report about forced abortions. Uh, about forced abortions under the one-child policy. And I don't know if you guys know anything about China or under the CCP, but 
the one child policy was you know you could only have one child if you got pregnant and you'd already had a child they would come and drag you to the police station and hit you in, stum in your stomach with a baseball bat until you aborted that was a kind of brutal level and he did a report on it and so the Chinese Communist Party put him on trial and in a show trial and they put him in prison for four years then when he got out of prison uh, and he was beaten in prison you can ask him questions I'm just going to sketch this we'll talk and you can ask you can ask questions mm -hmm. but so he was in prison and then when he came out of prison they put him under house arrest so what is house arrest what it means at least in his case was the Chinese Communist Party had a group of about 40, and Guangchen calls them thugs, who were around his house, so always watching his house. And they had a ring of thugs around the village in which he lived, because they didn't want him to escape. His, his cause was so famous that uh, there was an international campaign to get him released uh, from China. So there, everybody around the world were wearing dark glasses like he what he what he wears because he's blind and he was also on the cover of this magazine which I honestly don't know if you all have ever even seen a magazine but it's called Newsweek and uh, it was one of the two most famous magazines in America the other one was called Time magazine so he was the cover of Newsweek he was called the barefoot lawyer and then that was in 2005 and in 2010 Time magazine put him on its cover as one of the hundred most influential people in the world so I mean you guys have an opportunity for something that most people don't here's one of the hundred most influential people in the world you get to hear from him later tonight but I, I want to tell you what ha what else house arrest was house arrest was they had uh, spies or thugs who come in and out of his house anytime day or night who might sleep in the, on the, uh, in his bedroom they wanted him under constant surveillance okay he's blind now he's with his wife how did he escape just think about it think about yourself if you were under surveillance 24 hours a day seven days a week by 40 people could you even get out of your dorm room without them knowing it uh, could you get out of Washington DC he's in America I think and I'm very serious that his escape is one of uh, is a miracle now what happened was he and his wife would go up on the roof of his house and they would talk about the houses next to him about their backyards you know what and their walls between each house so what's in the next yard what's in the next yard because they're trying to think of a way for him to escape and so he had a mental map of the the next houses and then one night when the thugs weren't looking for about 10 seconds he 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 went up to the roof of his house and they put a dummy not a, a real dummy but they made something that looked like a person in his bed and they told the, the the CCP that he was sick lying in bed so his wife had to pretend like he was there so by himself in the middle of the night he climbed over the walls of the houses and through the yards and broke his foot and got to the edge of the village where there was a guard and he listened he has incredible hearing and he can make this is true he can make bat type sounds so he could he could discern that the guard had you know was taking a smoking break or what is it wasn't there he got across the yard he he knew of a uh, a trail by a river which he had gone on as a child he went to the next village he found some people there who were supporters of him and they took him to Beijing 
and he got to the American Embassy and when he got to the American Embassy the American Embassy wanted him not to leave China that is a scandal of all scandals it is a black mark on America but the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party was hated him so much and was so embarrassed and it threatened US Chinese relations for America to help him escape so they tried to talk him into staying in China but he's no fool they said we treat you good if you stay and he said well I'm not a fool so he had a cell phone two congressmen on Capitol Hill had a hearing where they had him speak on the cell phone to say what was happening and because of that publicity America the State Department allowed him to leave and that's why he's here in America now I'm gonna stop and let him speak but listen a blind man under 24 hour a day seven day a week surveillance by himself escapes if he made any noise so a dog barked or a tree branch broke the guards would hear him they'd know something was going on so I think it's a miracle and you get to hear from him tonight so I'll let Wang Chen talk to you about what is happening in China and uh, why you should care about what's happening in America. Okay. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm too glad to be here to talk with you. Today, I will, I will talk two things. The CCP is two biggest enemies in the whole world. One is the uh, United States, and another is Chinese people. I think. Uh, the foreign country, they don't understand the situation in mainland China. The Communist Party controls everything there. You know, the Communist Party's uh, political system is not uh, a very different than Western governments. In mainland China, the Communist Party spends more on monetary and repression uh, Chinese people than it does its military. That proves the Chinese people is first uh, enemy of the CCP in the party's mind. So everyone who exposes the truth will be harassed, prosecuted. Everyone who exposed the wrong thing the CCP did, the journalists, human rights lawyers, netizens, you know, we call the people who work on the internet, netizens, and the activist risks being kidnapped, disappeared, you know, they just put them in black jail, no one knows where the activist is, and imprisoned and tortured, yeah, maybe tortured the activist several days, then threw it on the street, then you report to the police, the police said, oh, I don't know what's happening. Who did that? In fact, the police did that. So, yeah, so, uh, since, I, until now, I think we can see more than 20 years. Since 20 years ago, the Khan Party, uh, uh, still a lot of uh, technology from uh, 
Western country create a big surveillance system in mainland China. Surveillance? Surveillance, yeah. More than 200 million cameras in mainland China. The Khan Party used the cameras and uh, dis uh, how to say, create the surveillance system and the CCTP used the facial uh, recognition and movement recognition to track the people. If you come somewhere, the car party can uh, control you behind the, the computer. So, <clears throat> even the people uh, live in foreign country, for example in the US, still very uh, scared. If they speak out some human rights, democracy, and uh, freedom of speech like that, the, the U.S. The, the, the Khan Party will send a police to your parents' house and threaten them and request them you have to call your son or your daughter in the U.S. Tell them stop to do the human rights work. Stop to mention about the uh, the history of the CCP. So under the CCP rule, no one feel uh, safe or lie. In mainland China, the Communist Party can take away anything from you. They said that belongs to the uh, country, but in fact, the party got it. Your house, your field, uh, field, 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 yeah, and and uh, even some uh, special thing come from your grandfather like that, if the city says that belongs to the <coughs> government, you cannot get them back. So another thing is about the United States, you know, the, big, the biggest enemy abroad is the United States. Everyone in mainland China knows this, because the CCP uh, never ceased using its mouthpiece to inflame hatred of America. Just because the, the U.S., the military, the technology, much, much more strong than CCP. If the U.S. wants to change the political system, they can. So the CCP thinks the U.S. If, if the U.S. stand with Chinese people, they will lose the power. So they use their propaganda, the mouthpiece, to do the to that to try to uh, uh, brainwash, brainwash. Yeah, brainwash. Yeah, to let the Chinese people know, oh, the U.S. is evil. The U.S. people is evil. They always think how to change our political system. We always try to give us trouble like that. That, that, that thing is the Communist Party control the power. Grabbed the power uh, 70 years ago, that stuck until now, never stopped them. So, you can see, don't think the Communist Party just hurt the Chinese people. The Khan Party harmed the people around the world. Don't think the Khan Party uh, far away. In fact, they surround us. The CCP spends huge resources to try to weaken the U.S. Uh, 
you use the propaganda infiltrating like that. They tried to corrode the civil society, universal uh, values, the individual uh, freedoms, body and mind. Even in the U.S., uh, they tried to spend money to buy the congressman. I think you heard about this one case in California, right? The CCP sent a person to try to influence the congressman's office, and then the FBI found them like that. I think you can know that. <coughs> And in the university too, a lot of students come from in China. The Communist Party, the uh, embassy, ask them to uh, do the surveillance work here. If they know some students uh, come from China, talk about human rights, about freedom, about the CCP in the classroom, they will report to the embassy. So the embassy will report to Beijing. Beijing will order the police to come to your house to threaten your parents. So the Confucius Institutes in the US, that is not Confucius. That is a spy organization. They did a lot like this. This is why just uh, said, since I came here, my good friend Christian Bill tried to help me to make a movie about my story. All the director, the editor, if they read my book, if they know my story, they say, oh, that is a good story. But, I don't think I can do that. We should know how to resolve the relations with the CCP if we do that. So now, 11 years have passed. The, the movie still, we still cannot make a movie about this. <coughs> the Khan Party try to use different way to destroy the U.S. freedom, uh, democracy, and uh, freedom of speech. In fact, uh, for example, they print the newspaper and put them uh, with the U.S. newspaper together, for example, Washington Post. Sometimes if you order the Washington Post, you will know, oh, some, you get more newspaper. That is English too. Maybe you think that is uh, the Washington Post print for you, but that's not. Sometimes the CCP printed and put it in that. So, now you can see in Hollywood, no one can uh, no one dares to make a movie, the human rights movie about China. Even if they want to make a movie about history, they have to ask the CCP how how about we 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 try to make the story like this, and how I can use that actor. Yeah, if the CCP asks them to change the file, they have to do that. If the CCP asks them to change the actor, if the actor that CCP don't like him or her, the Hollywood, the company have to do that. So you can see the infiltration very deep. So, When I work in mainland China, you know, if you 
for example, if you are a lawyer, <coughs> if you tried to use the cases to get money, it's okay. But if you found some uh, injustice happen, you tried to help the people, the CCP will ask the judicial system to give you a call. Stop to do that case. Listen to the party. If you keep doing that, you will lose your lawyer license. If you keep doing that, you said, oh, no, you're asking, you're requesting me to stop that, that is illegal. Chinese law give me the rights, I should help my uh, customer. Okay. If you try to go to some uh, prison or jail to visit the person, the company will order the guards on the way stop your car and beat you. You know, my lawyer <coughs> tried to visit me in jail 2011. Uh, no, 2005. When he just arrived, when he just arrived the bus, some person said, "Oh, you can lie down here." You know, when the bus arrived in my city, in Linji city, that person said, "Why you touch me? Why you feel my body?" Then the person called her friend and come here use a metal step to hit my lawyer's step. So my lawyer have to come back in Beijing. Of course they know report to the police, but no police come there to help you more than two hours. So after two weeks, my lawyer came back from Beijing and told me that story. That you can see how evil the CCP. So, a lot of stories, you know, uh, even in mainland China, you know, when the CCP have a new law like the ADE, the US ADE, in that law the CCP said, if the disabled people live in the rural China, they needn't to pay the fee and the taxes. But the CCP never tried to do that. They, they always ask the people, the disabled people, to pay that. Even that is illegal, that is very clear. Yeah. So I stand up to help the disabled people to send the uh, officials to the court. And in the US, I think that is easy, but in mainland China, that is very, very difficult. Yeah, if you send the file to the court, the court will refuse your file. The court says, oh, that is a blah, 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 like that. Found some excuse and like that. But then the court will call the official, come to there and tell them, oh, Chen Guan Chen tried to sue you here uh, half hours ago. So, <laughs> like that. So, you can see under the CCP system, no rule of law. So finally I want to tell you two things is very important. One is the CCP is not the same as the Western government. In mainland China, the political system is party system where the party controls everything. Another thing is the Communist Party does not represent the Chinese people. The CCP kidnapped the country, coerced the government, and enslaved the people. The CCP is the kidnapper. And the CCP tried to destroy the uh, international rule. So, CCP is the enemy of humanity. We have to find a way to face the devil, the CCP, and confront the CCP. 
yeah, we cannot ignore that. If we keep ignore that, the CCP will use different way to destroy our freedom life here. So even uh, I remember when we just came here, you know, uh, the CCP. Ask some organization to make me silent. And at that time, the CCP donate $24 or $25 million. It's just the propaganda. They feel appreciated. In Washington, D.C., every year, the CCP spends. Uh, how to see the member. <laughs> uh, $200 million just in Washington, D.C. to do the propaganda and the infiltration. So, yeah, I, I want to give more time to you to, to ask some questions so we can talk more contents yeah. Next stop. Good, thanks. Thank you. Uh, if you get a copy of this book, uh, it has some photographs in it, like of his, of his house and uh, his life when he was growing up, and you get a picture of the Newsweek cover, and you see the lawyers that tried to come to visit him, and they were beaten very bad, beaten yeah, up yeah. very bad, and had to go to the hospital. Um, and it's a picture, actually, of Christian Bale when he tried to come and visit uh, Guang Chen as well. Um, and also, I think there's a picture of the, some of the yards he had to get through to, uh, to escape from his village to try to get to the other village. So, um, and also there's a picture of the hearing that I mentioned up on Capitol Hill uh, where they held up the cell phone to listen to what he had to say. So uh, I want to say two things. Number one, so the guys who are ahead of the uh, president, the vice president, uh, I want to ask them to send you uh, info from Will Deathridge about how you can sign up for the Barefoot Lawyer because we have a weekly podcast called the Barefoot <coughs> Lawyer Reports, and it's Guang Chen talking about the same kind of things we just talked about, what's going on in the U.S., what's going on in China. And sometimes we, I, I sometimes do interviews with uh, famous people who are involved in this, like Ambassador Sam Brownback and others. So I hope all of you would at least sign up for the Barefoot Lawyer and then, you know, ask your friends here at Catholic or your friends in your hometown or your brother and sister or whomever to sign up for because we're trying to get our main work is to try to get his voice out there in America where people your age can learn from him so that's the first thing the second thing is you got any questions because he'll be happy to answer them. Um, yeah okay, here's the guy go ahead uh, what are your thoughts on the app TikTok Oh, TikTok, the company uses to store some, to steal something here, right? <laughs> He's asking you, do you think? Yeah, I think that is true. You know, the spy balloon. The spy balloon. Yeah, spy balloon and the TikTok, WeChat, especially the WeChat, very, very, very dangerous. Don't deal with that. The company can steal any information in your phone from that. So yeah. all the people in mainland China who use that, they know that. So don't talk the sensitive thing on WeChat. Thank you. Somebody else have a, uh, want to ask a question? What? I, I just, we, oh. just, we have another question. <coughs> uh, one thing I will tell you, he thinks that the Apple phones are the best ones to keep the CCP out of your information. So, rather yes. than Android. 
He, yeah. he believes in the uh, in Apple. In my experience, in mainland China, the company also the companies give them the the code, so the CCP can open the back door. But until now, Apple refused to do that. That is my experience. So, yeah. What was so? <coughs> I imagine you guys have heard about the Chinese firewall, the idea that you know China is, is uh, unable to get any information from the West. And there is a lot of truth in that, particularly for ordinary people. But Guangxin climbs the firewall every day. And so how does he do that? How do you do that? How do you climb the firewall? Uh, we use different ways. One way we have used some secret apps. Another, we have to use some uh, special uh, app to climb the firewall. If we, we uh, climb the firewall coming in from a foreign country, it's easier than if you're inside. Uh -huh, then if you're inside. Yeah, if you, in, you are inside trying to climb the firewall to get the freedom, freedom information from a foreign country, much more dif difficult. So my friend have to use the secret apps and try to use another app to climb the firewall first. So and they have secret <coughs> rooms where they can get on and talk about things the yeah. CCP can't can't get in. Yeah, if we try to discuss something, we have to use that we so the CCP cannot come in <laughs> to listen to us. So the technology is very strong, but we should careful to give it to the CCP to use the technology to do the surveillance. We should be careful that we don't give them the technology? Yeah, we don't give the technology to the CCP yeah. to let it use the new technology to uh, create the surveillance system, surveillance. control the people. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to say one thing, we got a question, but so to make sure you guys understood what he was saying, that they have a massive surveillance system, um, 300 million cameras, and very sophisticated facial recognition that is, that is more than facial, like you might think facial recognition just means they can tell if they see me walking down the street whether it's me or you. But it's not. It also reads your body and it reads the kind of way you're moving and it can figure out whether you were meeting with somebody they need to be afraid of. So it's very sophisticated um, surveillance equipment. But we got another question here. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask, do you think the Chinese people will overthrow the CCP? We saw uh, protests in Hong Kong and then more recently Shanghai. Do you think that's a sign of progress in overthrowing the CCP, or do you think the CCP is just going to double down and tighten the grip? Uh, I think, you know, in mainland China, more and more people are weak now. They know the democracy system and the authoritarian regime, which one is better. But you know, in mainland China, the Khan Party, they don't have the tool. Even the people understand, but how to do? You know, in the U.S. we have the gun, right? The U.S. in mainland China, the people even you got some knives to cut the paper. You have to show your ID. Yeah. So people understand. I believe in the future, Chinese people will stand up to tear down the CCP, but we don't know when. If for example, all the surveillance system, the technology comes from foreign countries. The foreign countries' company help the CCP create the system, include the uh, Great Firewall. So, if the West countries stand with Chinese people, support them to get their rights back, I think the CCP will go. Yeah. Until now, uh, if the Western government uh, companies keep trying work with the CCP, keep use the payment 
and to try work with the CCP, the situation is not good. And you know, before just the facial uh, recognition and movement recognition, but after the uh, coronavirus, the CCP used your healthy code to make a new surveillance system that much, much more strong. Anywhere you walk on the street, the CCP know that. For example, you're from Washington, D.C. To, uh, to another state, where you are, how, how far from there, the CCP very easy to, to know you. So this is why a lot of people know democracy is good. The rule of law is good for that for for them, but they try to change the evil system. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. So the international stage is a bit on fire at the moment uh, with so many wars going on and there's a lot of fear about um, something happening with Taiwan mm -hmm. and I personally just came back from studying in Tokyo for four months so should America should Americans be concerned about uh, the CCP making moves to increase their influence in Far East Asia especially in our allies like South Korea Japan Taiwan uh, perhaps even Vietnam or the Philippines and places like that uh, yeah, I think the U.S. should. The U.S. should raise up. Uh, rise up? Yeah, rise up. Uh -huh. yeah. Rise up its spirit no. and. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, exceptionalism to confront the CCP. You know, in the future, in fact, not in the future, that the, the war is happening, right? In Ukraine, in Middle East, even more in the future. So I think in the future, the democratic nations have to face this. That is justice and injustice. We cannot use the diplomacy, the trade, and the appeasement to change that. He, he believes in very strong uh, standing up, U.S. should stand up very strong against the CCP. Yeah, of course. U.S. much, much more strong than CCP. Even Russia and the CCP together, they still weak. So, also, because I've talked to him about this, what do you think is going to happen with Taiwan? Of course, the CCP never stop thinking how to get Taiwan. But uh, until now, the CCP Scare if they do that, the U.S. will help them. In the future, the U.S. will what? U.S. will help Taiwan. Help Taiwan. Yeah. For example, you can see, uh, 1996, 90, uh, 2000. Every time when we call Taiwan, yeah, Taiwan have the election. The U.S. send the air. Uh, Craft aircraft carrier, carrier. Uh, aircraft carrier in uh, East Ocean, and to protect Taiwan's uh, vote. Even when I study in Qingdao, that I remember that is 1997. The, uh, the the person come from some military boat our school to talk about that. Oh, we scare Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan is very scared, uh, blah, 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 like that. I said, okay, I heard the U.S. air, uh, uh, country, how to say that? Aircraft. Craft, yeah. Aircraft carrier stays there. He said, okay, for us, we just ignore that. But I, I know the CCP is together. So 
He thinks that the U.S. military might uh, is still decisive in terms of uh, an invasion of Taiwan. And yeah. also because Taiwan's an island and because it's difficult to maneuver on it and stuff like that, that uh, uh, they can defend themselves now. Yeah, I've not got me know. In mainland China, a lot of people know that. When the CCP said we will attack Taiwan, the people on the internet comments said, yes, our uh, aircraft uh, area is very strong. Our uh, it can smoke him by itself, so the U.S. cannot see where you are. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, do you have a follow-up on that, or is that what? I'm just asking the student if he has oh. a follow-up question. I do have another question, but it's unrelated. Okay, um, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a friend who is actually going to study in China for a couple of weeks at the end of the year. Would you have any advice for him when he goes over? So as a student who's going to study in China, do uh -huh. you have any advice for them? They're going to be there for two two weeks? Uh, a couple of weeks, a maybe. A few weeks, one, a month or something. One, one or two. Short days. time. Oh, if, if, if your friend has some time, I uh, can, uh, I think he or she should come somewhere to see something. If you just come on the street or in the city, you you, uh, you you saw, for example, you saw in the store a lot of different food. Looks like very good, but in fact, you cannot eat that food. In mainland China, we say, if you made this food, you will not eat this food. <laughs> who, who will eat it? Pardon? Who will eat it? Who don't know how they made the food? Yeah, but who will eat it? Will the Communist Party eat it? No, no, that normal people, they don't know. Maybe, yeah, the, the, the propaganda is good. Yeah. So, so he, he he's from a small village originally, and uh, <coughs> he's, he believes uh, that the rural poor are no better off than they ever were. In fact, he says he's blind because the Communist Party made promises it doesn't keep. They said they were going to bring health care to all the poor people. He's blind because his mother didn't have 25 cents to get medicine for him. Mm -hmm. So if what he's saying is get out of the city and see some of China outside those cities where they have kind of displays that are not representative of the rest of the country. Yeah, at that time, you know, almost the same the U.S. president to visit Beijing, you know, uh, 1971, the U.S. President uh -huh. Nixon, right? Uh -huh. He visited Beijing, and uh, my in my village, uh, some uh, someone work in the military at that time in Beijing too. He said the CCP asked the people uh, come to the store to buy the. For example, the eggs, and uh, because of the U.S. Uh, uh, president there looks like the people coming to the door, oh, I can't sell the eggs. I that that food uh, looks a lot, and take it out and pay the money and come out the front door. They surround another street and come in the back door and put all the eggs on that and then another people come to buy again. So, you know, the U.S. president said, oh, see, in China, the business is very good, the people life is good, a lot of food can eat, but that's not true. So, in fact, at that time in the rural China, a lot of people died just because no, no food to eat. And at that time, my family, even not 25 cents, to take me to see the doctor. So. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, make sure, Will, that everybody has that information, each person. Nobody gets missed. Okay, if you don't have any other questions, we'll finish.
<coughs> but uh, we will send the uh, info on how to sign up for the Barefoot Lawyer. Sign up for it, listen to it, tell us what you think. You can tell us if we need to change something or whatever. It tell us what you're interested in us talking about, but also share it because we want more and more people to learn from his experience. So anyway, we we're appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mentioned my lawyer, the company beat him. He he live here now. Maybe we found the time to ask him to talk with you to tell you his experience. When the CCP uh, prosecute team B. <laughs> yeah. Okay.